Dr. Shields, thank you so much for meeting with us at the ASRS 2017 meeting. You had a presentation about the correlation of genetic abnormalities with clinical features of uveal melanoma. Can you tell us a little bit about that finding? That's a little sure. bit interesting. Sure, yeah. So there's been a lot of development in the field of uveal melanoma. You know, we're detecting tumors earlier. Uh, we have some new therapies on the horizon. But what I spoke about here is perhaps, I think, the most compelling. Um, we and several other centers around the uh, United States and around the world have been looking at the genetic abnormalities that lead to the development of melanoma and that predict metastatic disease for melanoma. And so in my talk that I gave, I looked at these genetic abnormalities, what exactly is their risk for metastasis, and then I took it one step backwards and I said, hey, can we identify any clinical features that predict bad mutations? So regarding the risk for metastasis, there are basically three main chromosomes that we study, chromosome 3, 6, and 8. Chromosomes 3 and 8 are bad. They're deleterious. If they're mutated, they lead to a higher risk for metastasis. Chromosome 3, 6 is kind of a chromosome that responds to these bad mutations, and it attempts to be protective. So we found that if you have chromosome 3 and 8 mutated, you can have risks as high as 77 times greater risk for metastasis. In one instance, in certain combinations, you can have over 100 times greater risk for metastatic disease from the melanoma. This, that's really serious. So we understand what the impact of these mutations are. And those patients that have high risk, we enter into protocols where we try new therapies to protect them from metastatic disease. The part of the talk that I gave at the ASRS in Boston was looking at, is there anything clinically that we can find that predicts who's going to have these bad mutations? And sure enough, we did find some statistically significant findings. For example, the older you are at the time melanoma is diagnosed, the more mutations you have. That's important. So if we can catch melanoma in young patients, that's great. Number two, the larger your melanoma is, the more the mutations you have and the worse your prognosis. So the second point is catch melanoma early when it's real little. And the third is, there's a condition we, as ophthalmologists, we're all familiar with. It's called melanocytosis. It's a birthmark. It's a birthmark that a baby's born with, and it carries a lifelong risk for the development of melanoma. And if you develop melanoma, we found that that birthmark, melanocytosis, is associated with a risk in chromosome 8 mutations. So, these are three really important clinical features, older age, larger tumor, and ocular melanocytosis. Where do you see research going in this field, given these findings? Yeah. So, you know, I think it's more than identifying just genetic mutations. You know, I think the future of this field is going to be looking at biomarkers. Biomarkers are essentially biological markers that are associated with any cancer in the human body. And there are hundreds of biological markers, like uh, BRCA1, BRCA2 with breast cancer, uh, BRAF with skin melanoma. And it's important to know these biomarkers because we now have medications that work specifically against these biomarkers, like we have new anti-BRAF medications. So we know that BRAF is not mutated with uveal melanoma. It is mutated with conjunctival melanoma, a different type of melanoma. But I think the future is going to be looking at all of these biomarkers with the intent to identify one or two or five or ten that could be managed with systemic chemotherapies that we already have, because we have to improve the prognosis with melanoma. Um, so this is so different than when I entered the field back in the 1980s. Basically, 
The big thing was to identify melanoma when it was small or medium and treat it. Now we're looking into the, the, the microscopy of the melanoma. What is it about the melanoma that makes it higher risk, that make, makes it at risk for metastasis? It, these are big strides that we're making with uveal melanoma. So given these recent strides in, in the past few decades, what would you say to clinicians and, and retina specialists in their daily practice who maybe have patients um, facing this? Yeah. So, you know, the average ophthalmologist might see a patient with a uveal melanoma two or three times in their entire practice over 30 years. So it's not about finding a melanoma. It's about looking at those moles and freckles that they see in the back of the eye in their patients. And if they think one looks a bit suspicious, have their local retina specialist or their local ocular oncologist take a look. Don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed to have an ocular oncologist take a look at a freckle just to be sure it's not a flat melanoma. So for the general ophthalmologist out there, the take home point is catch melanoma as early as possible. Um, you know, all of us in ocular oncology are willing to look at pictures or emails or letters with pictures attached. You know, if it means that we might be saving a life, I think that's really important. So early detection is important. And number two, all, uh, monitor those patients with melanocytosis. You know, I think it's important they get checked at least, dilated, at least once a year because they do carry a risk to develop melanoma, and now we know if they develop melanoma, they tend to have a mutation in chromosome 8, which could impart higher risk for metastasis. Wow. So for all of the you know, ophthalmologists out there, uh, you know, keep your antenna up. When you see small pigmented lesions in the fundus, um, Keep a watch on them, take a photograph, maybe get an ultrasound or an OCT, just to be sure that lesion isn't producing subretinal fluid or risky features.